21st, 21st of January 2023. Hello, everybody. Sergey Baklikov, you're watching Baklikov Live now from Volgograd, formerly known as Stalingrad, Russia. And I'm staying here on the embankments, the embankments called the 62nd Army Embankments, the army which was staying here and fighting for Stalingrad back in 1942-1943. There on the background is actually the river, you don't see that now, but if you watched my morning stream, then you could see that the Volga River, one of the largest, if not the largest uh, rivers of Russia, the thing is like there all the time goes the arguments regarding Volga River and Kama River, but anyway, Volga, it's uh, 3,500 kilometers long. It begins from the uh, Tver region in the northwest of Russia and goes all the way until the Caspian Sea. You know, when I was in uh, Tver, that was a Volga river. When I was in uh, Nizhny Novgorod, there was Volga river. When I was in Kazan, there was Volga river. When I was in Samara, that was the Volga river. Now here in Volgograd, it's Volga River, and then there goes Astrahan, it's Volga River, and then, already that far from Astrahan, it gets into the uh, uh, Caspian Sea, okay? So now you can see that, but uh, if you want to see that, you definitely need to watch my morning stream. And uh, today I was here right on the sunrise, and I was surprised how fast, how fast the sun was coming up from the horizon. Yes, that was unbelievable, unbelievable. So now, welcome back to the night version of my uh, today's morning stream. We are exploring Volgograd for the first time ever. We are exploring the Volgograd. Finally, I'm here, I'm here. You know, Volgograd, Volgograd, Stalingrad, the place, the city where, where was the deadliest battle of World War II, the Battle of Stalingrad, which has lasted for 200 days. 1.2 million of Russian soldiers and 1.5 million of the uh, Nazi soldiers died just here, just for 200 days. And that was the turning point for the Soviet army back in 1943, when that was over. It had started in August 1942 and finished the 2nd of February 1943. Okay, so we are beginning the local time, 7.10, 7.10 p.m. And I'm beginning from the uh, 62nd Army embankments. This is the embankment, there's Volga River. This is the largest river port on Volga River. Because now here in Russia, uh, there is the renaissance of the riverboat cruises. Yes, that's the renaissance. The renaissance. Also, there's Philharmonic, Philharmonic Hall. There's uh, two buildings which look like the sails, you know, kind of new buildings there in Volgograd. And here I'm on the central streets, the central streets which lead from the embankments right from Volga to, you know, um, to uh, the central street of the city, Prospect Lenin, Lenin Avenue, uh, through the Alley of the Heroes. Now we will walk through the Alley of the Heroes. Everybody, um, Maria, Amar, Salam, hey guys, thank you very much for upgrading your membership. And uh, here I want to say special thanks to the members of my channel. The uh, trips, all my trips recently, only for the last month, like Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod, Vyborg, Veliki Novgorod, Moscow, Novosibirsk, now Volgograd, are possible, thankful to the members of my channel. Always happy to see Russia through your eyes, Maria, Marisa, I am, thanks so much. And Jan, um, Jan Olaf Johansson, thank you very much, thank you very much, too. And and uh, hello to Uppsala, Uppsala from Volgograd. Yes, we are in the Volgograd. Well, yesterday I flew um, 1800 kilometers, so it's like almost 2000 kilometers uh, south, well, a little bit southeast, more south, but a little bit east from St. Petersburg. Two hours, 40 minutes flight, and I'm here. Direct flight from St. Petersburg, I came here. Yesterday I was not streaming because I landed at seven o'clock, 
and uh, well I never knew the city yet so that's why I was not able to start like you know like on the way like right away there's a stream here okay so yesterday I was just like exploring it uh, myself and now can show you like the most optimal uh, route here so Volgograd formerly known as Stalingrad but not only formerly yet known as Tsaritsyn. Tsaritsyn. In Russian language Tsaritsyn it sounds like Tsars, like belonging to the Tsar, Tsars, but it's nothing about Tsar. The thing is here also in the city they have the river called Tsaritsa. Tsaritsa it's um, uh, literally like you know like a like a female Tsar, Tsarina, okay? But even that one is like not about anything about Tsars. Tsaritsa, it's uh, from the uh, Turk. Tsaritsa, it's like uh, Tsarisa, it's something like a beautiful uh, river. The thing is here, we are right next to Kazakhstan and uh, we are not far from uh, the place where back in the days here um, the land was uh, controlled with uh, Mongols and stuff like that. You know, so and um, these lands also for this reason have a lot of like Mongolian names it's only under you know like uh, Peter the Great, Catherine the Great Tsaritsa turned to be uh, the uh, Russian town and it was one of uh, the southeastern southeastern outpost of Russia in order to control to control the safety of old Russia from the Mongols. The town is actually was founded in 1589, but uh, these days you will see almost nothing from those old pre-revolutionary days, because let me tell you that during the Battle of Stalingrad, 90% 90, 90 of the uh, city was destroyed and uh, they immediately started to rebuild it um, from the end of the wars of the of the war like since 1945 and uh, the boom of the construction here was until the death of Stalin until 1953 uh, the thing is Stalingrad Stalingrad after especially the battle of Stalingrad it turned to be uh, the uh, greatest symbol of the victory they now call this the motherland of victory because the turn point of world war ii started here after the soviet army was able to defeat the paulus army uh, the army of paulus uh, in stalingrad and then like uh, the Soviet army started advancing, started advancing here. So it became the real symbol. Besides that, it's just a great, great city and a great place next to Volga river. It's even more and more beautiful here, here in the summertime when all is green. Uh, the weather here is like really hot in the summertime because we are like pretty much in the uh, south Yes, if you will look at the map, you will see that actually not far from us, there's already the Kazakhstan, okay. The fountain, which is now turned off for the winter. These are the girls dancing the traditional Russian dance called Birozka, which means like a little birch, birch tree. Yes, Volgograd. Stalingrad, it was called from 1925 until 1962. You know, when after Stalin, the thing is, when after Stalin to the authority came Nikita Khrushchev, he's like kind of, he's kind of never loved Stalin. And there was such a, like a campaign the campaign against the cult of Stalin and the city back then was renamed to Volgograd just like the Graz, the city on Volga 
1962. Uh, so it was renamed in in the frames of the of the fight against the against the the cult of Stalin. Well, now I can say that I really enjoy I really enjoy Volgograd, and uh, I'm uh, I will look forward for when I will come here in the summertime, and next time, of course, I will come here with my family, with my uh, with my wife, with my daughter. Yeah, I think it's like maybe a, not a big thing that. They are not here because, let's say, yesterday it was yesterday and today in the morning it was kind of cold. It was minus 12 degrees Celsius in the morning. Yeah, when I was when I when I planned my trip here, the forecast was it will be minus one, minus two. It's just like as uh, uh, warm as in Saint Petersburg now, but nope. An alley of heroes. It's literally the alley, the alley of the heroes of the Soviet Union. It's like the alley with the stalas, with the names of all the guys who participated in the body, uh, in the Battle of Stalingrad, and who got the medal of the hero of the Soviet Union. You see, some guys even got uh, two medals, two medals, like uh, twice the heroes. Of the Soviet Union believe me it's it it worth a lot those are the real heroes believe me nobody was getting the star of the hero of the Soviet Union for nothing nobody and those are the real heroes it's not like you know Superman or Iron Man those are the real heroes, the real heroes who are existed. The TikTokers, TikTokers everywhere. Gina Skinner, thank you for showing me Russia from Jade and Gigi. Thank you guys, thank you very much. It's awesome to see that you enjoy, you enjoy my stuff. Uh, this is literally how the uh, star of the hero of the Soviet Union looks like. And this is the medal for the defense of Stalingrad. And this is the order of Lenin. Vladimir Lenin, the leader of world proletariats and the founder of the Soviet Union. Um, there's, uh, well, Lenin is like, we can, we can find many controversial things about Lenin, but the one thing which is uh, completely cover everything about L Lenin, it's uh, the thing that uh, after the uh, fall of the Russian Empire back in 1917, he was able to uh, get all the pieces of the Russian Empire, like most of it, together again, but already in the, uh, uh, how to say, reincarnation of, like in the Soviet Union, in the view of the Soviet Union. Uh, I think that after the uh, collapse of the Russian Empire, the fall of Russian Empire, many, especially smaller regions, smaller countries, they are realized that while they always wanted the independence, but in fact, they turned to be weaker. And only together, only together, they can be strong, okay? It's like even what we have now. In fact, the problems that we have now, mostly the problems because of the fall of USSR. The Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, right in front of me. You see Alexander Nevsky, our prince, who lived 800 years ago. He is pretty much respected everywhere. <laughs> oh, 
Hi, John Green, Stacy O. Shields. The history we read today is Twitter, just as the fake news that is throwing our minds. Yeah, Twitter is disaster. But maybe at least Elon Musk will get things some better there. Well, at least he wants to pretend that there will be no agenda anymore. Any agenda. So this is how only for 15 minutes from the embankments of Volga River. By the way, that embankment's really worth attention. It's a long embankment, really great embankment, but not now. Now, when uh, there is no green leaves, when it's kind of cold, there's not that fun at all. So we yet will come back to, to come back there in the summertime, and that's when I will show you the embankments. Now there's not that fun, but I'm taking you to the main street of the uh, city of Volgograd, the central district. So I told you that after the Battle of Stalingrad, when 90% of the city was destroyed, we will not see here, you know, that traditional classicism or Art Nouveau or Renaissance or Baroque, um, the pre-revolutionary architecture, stuff like that, it was all destroyed. But it was rebuilt mostly in the periods of 1945, right after the war, and the death of Stalin in 1953. And uh, back then, back then, uh, Volgograd, well, back then Stalingrad, being the top priority city, one of top priority cities for the recovery after the war, I mean, they invited the best architects here, the best city planners, sculptors and stuff like that, and uh, they started rebuilding it. So that's why now in the center we mostly can see here the uh, Stalinist giant monumental brutal Stalinist neoclassical buildings. It's actually the heaven for all those who love the Stalinist neoclassical architecture of the end of 1940s, beginning of 50s. A massive, massive buildings. It's also interesting to say that my father my father was born in Volgograd back in 1957 and until the age of three he was living here. Yeah, so this is the motherland of my father. And uh, I'm here for the first time. The thing is, uh, the parents of my father, my grandparents, they moved to Volgograd in the Republic of Bashkortostan, a little town of Kumertau, just because they had a lot of relatives there, working there. I was taking you to Kumertau, and uh, if you remember the Kumertau, it's um, <coughs> the town of the helicopter builders. They are building the helicopters there, the Enterprise, which is in Kumertau under the sanctions of the United States now and also the uh, um, the city of miners the miners like iron ore miners and also the helicopter industry there and uh, so uh, my father hadn't any relatives here that's why I never traveled here before because my father hadn't any relatives here left from his Volgograd days. And I'm here for the first time now only in my age of 38. The public transportation. Um, Volgograd is the only city in Russia where we have so-called metro tram. Yes, metro tram, or it's literally here called uh, 
скоростной трамвай, speed tram or speeded tram. Look, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's uh, like a metro. I mean, when you enter inside, all like the pavilion, the signs, the doors, the escalators, everything looks exactly like in a metro in Moscow or St. Petersburg, but there's no tourniquets. And instead of the typical metro trams, trains, metro trains, there are the trams because not all the route goes through goes under the grounds it's also go goes like above the grounds i mean like typical tram and that's unusual and that's unusual that's also the contact line there's not uh, downstairs just in the rails like in a metro but <clears throat> But in the, in the, how to say, up. Thank you for such an informative tour. Love your videos, Kyle Douglas. Kyle, thank you very much. Yes, the contact line is upstairs. Well, I mean like a typical tram, but it just have a uh, tunnels, exactly like in a um, frigging um, metro. I believe that tomorrow I will film that. Uh, tomorrow until evening I it will stay here and I'm playing uh, I'm planning to film uh, the vlog what you see this is the one of the uh, uh, speed train speed tram speed tram stations you see you go and you're entering like the typical um, old metro station it's called Komsomolska just like in uh, Moscow so you see I mean absolutely the same even spirit the same, spirit is the same, the tile is the same, like everything is the same, look. <clears throat> There's everything the same, but there comes not a typical uh, metro train, but the tram. That's unusual. Hello, Neil McDonald's. Hello, Jonathan Raming. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. You was asking if uh, the steps there on the embankment were those 200 steps. No, no yet. No yet. <clears throat> By the way, right now we are going to the Lenin Square and uh, the house of Pavlov, Gergert Mill, and uh, the Museum of the Battle of Stalingrad. <clears throat> The center of Volgograd, such a Stalinist, brutal, neoclassical center. Uh, brutal in a good way, in a good way. It was one of top priority cities to recover. Yes, being such a symbol of the victory, of course, of course. They were not pity the money for the recovery. Invited all the best guys. Waffles, coffee. Hello, IMX SPB, Gamma Xeno 69. I say hi to everybody, it's nice to see the people continue joining, 338 people online. Yes, you guys continue joining because I just begun. We never even saw the house of Pavlov and uh, Gergert Mill yet. And of course, we never went to the memorial of the Battle of Stalingrad. with the uh, motherland calls monuments, the largest monuments in Russia, 82 meters monuments. 
high poverty stacks high over there the air temperature now it's uh, about like minus four minus five degrees celsius by the way it's now way warmer than it was yesterday and even today in the morning it was minus 12. i i really like i really like got frozen today in the morning to say honest what's the original name of this city at Tsaritsum? hello Todd. yes i already told about it when it was founded in 1589 it was Tsaritsum. then in 1925 it was renamed to stalingrad then in 1962 it was renamed to Volgograd. Hello, Bridge and Tunnel Scooter Club. Hello, Tony Ann. I think here I'm going to take you to one of the alleys. Uh, partially, partially. The uh, Lenin Avenue, the central street here, it is having an alley in the middle of the street. What makes it really comfortable to walk, and uh, especially in the summertime when all the trees are blooming. Silvana Studio, hi to Australia. It must be really late in Australia now, but it's nice to see you here. Hi, Mfish. Have a good breakfast. Well, here it's uh, like 7.35, dinner time. Hello, Greg McMillan. Yes, welcome to Volgograd. You was the first person who two days ago guest you guessed it right away like i told you like hey dudes the weekend is coming and the new destination of like where i will go to bring you the new contents and uh, i said hey guys just try to guess let's play the game and uh, greg mcmillan guessed that right away killed all the intrigue Hi Brodin, hi to Sweden, hi Broski Bear. There's one of the universities and another university will be on the left, Volgograd Pedagogical University. And uh, here we are already not far from the Lenin Square, where right behind the Lenin Square there's the house of Pavlov and Gergert meal and the panoramic museum the battle of stalingrad i will tell you now more about that when we'll get there where now there's uh, the lenin square there used to be one of the strongest battles of the Battle of Stalingrad. Amor and Maria Salam, you are the hero here and in God protection always our best, Sergey. Thank you so much, Amar, Maria. Thank you for supporting my totally great channel. My totally amazing channel, unbelievable channel, which is always bringing you the real stuff i'm bringing you the real stuff you see i'm not freaking sitting home only for the last month kazan nizhny novgorod moscow veliky novgorod Vyborg, novosibirsk and now volgograd i'm taking you to the real places the university It may seem like some like a, it's a hotel or something, but it's the university.
Motherland monument was epic, yeah, and uh, today you will see that again. This is actually something like a night version, night version of my morning stream. Stalingrad's Rodina Pobeda, the motherlands of the victory. Yes, Volgograd's former Stalingrad considered as the motherlands of the victory because exactly here after the battle of Stalingrad where the Soviet army defeated the Nazi army the army of Paulus it was the turn point it was the place where the Soviet army started advancing before that the Nazis already reached like almost reached Moscow and uh, the Leningrad was in the siege. But to that time, the Soviet army already mobilized enough to give the push back. And, uh, we, well, you know, it's not the first time when it was like that. Let's say the army of Napoleon back in 1812 also like reached Moscow and even like burned Moscow. But anyway, the army of the Russian Empire was able to push the Napoleon French army back. Uh, Todd Smith, thank you, Sergey, for showing us the real Russia instead of the lies most here daily. All the best to you from Pennsylvania. You're welcome. Yes, no fake, no bullshit since 2012. You see? Uh, you know, if yet in 2012, when I started my vlogs, just my regular vlogs, not the live streams, People used to tell me that I'm making a propaganda or something like that. But now, but now finally everybody can see that I'm not making any propaganda. I show it is what it is. Because you see, here goes live, real time, no cuts, no edits. Here is no any way like for me to cut anything. You see, you just see yourself what happens here and there. Already 73 citizen towns for the last three years. Pedagogical University. Another Stalinist building here. And I almost reached the Lenin Square. Lenin Square, right behind the Lenin Square, there's the house of Pavlov. It's the residential building constructed in 1930s, just a regular residential building, but which is during the Battle of Stalingrad, turned to be one of the, like, uh, you know, dots, defense points, um, where the Soviet army soldiers were keeping the defense under the commanding of the Surgeon Pavlov, Yakov Pavlov. That's why it's called the House of Pavlov. And right in front, there's the Gergert Mill. I will tell more about it now. You are the honest, you are the honest Russian hero. Thank you very much. Thank you for such an appreciation. Broski Bear, yes, that's delusional. Where is Pavlov's dog? Dude, I don't know if you consider this as like funny, but the Pavlov's dog has nothing in common. Hello, Maria Salam. Hello again, and thank you again. Maria and Amar, thank you big time. All right, all right, look. 
look now how quiet it is just a saturday night in volgograd pretty quiet pretty peaceful but you have no idea what it used to be 80 years ago almost exact like yes exactly 80 years ago because In the end of January 1943, the battles kept going here. Now there's the house of the officers. It's like the uh, culture club for the military officers. Well, it wasn't here in the days of the war. Here was another building, so all of them were destroyed. Now it's all rebuilt. But it's exactly here, in this area, was the biggest battles. Jenny Skinner, great history learned. Thank you again. Look, the thing is, the thing is, here in Stalingrad, for the reason the battles were in the city, here wasn't a typical, like, uh, more like a traditional solid front line. And all the defense was based and supported on you know mostly the buildings something something you can stay behind and uh, something what you can organize as uh, your fortress every building was the fortress back in those days Amar Salam. I like this city. It's too quiet. I love it. I think it's way more people here in the summertime. A lot of tourists. Yes, I think not many tourists in Volgograd in the winter time. But anyway, it's great here. First of all, people have to come here for the for the history for the military history, the war history, the history of the largest war in the history of humanity and the history of the deadliest battle of that war. Lenin Square. With the monument to Vladimir Lenin the leader of world proletary and the founder of USSR. You know that here in uh, Volgograd, actually another monument to Vladimir Lenin and here in Volgograd, that another statue of Lenin is the largest statue of Lenin and the largest statue of the real human ever lived in the world. 57 meters statue of Vladimir Lenin. Unfortunately, it's like pretty far from here. I can't go there right now. Hope I will do that tomorrow. By the way, if you will look at the map, you will see that Volgograd is unusual. Unusual city. It's like really wide. Mostly goes like for 80 kilometers along the embankments of Volga River, 80 kilometers. And uh, I actually heard like from local people that here, if you have like several deals, several matters uh, to do in the city, you better plan it the way like, um, well, at first I'm making the business in the uh, northern part of the city and then in the southern part of the city or vice versa. Because, I mean, like, if you were driving, like, back and forth here, back and forth, like, from one side of the city to another, I mean, that can take a lot of time and a uh, huge mileage. Also, an amazing mural here. Whoa. I was filming that by day, in the morning, to be exact. 
But even now you can see this. The house of Pavlov is located right behind and we go there now. The house of Pavlov, the residential building constructed here in 1930s. And uh, the house which has turned to be the defense point in the Battle of Stalingrad, one of where the Soviet soldiers were keeping the defense under the leadership, or should I say like commanding of the Sergeant Pavlov, Yakov Pavlov. For 58 days, they were keeping the they were keeping the defense there. Same as in a Gergert mill. Well, if the house of Pavlov was completely rebuilt, then they intentionally left the Gergert mill the way, exactly the way it used to be after the Battle of Stalingrad. They left it as the reminder of those awful days when uh, the Soviet Union had to defeat the largest cancer on the body of our planet, the Nazism. So now this is a courtyard. So this is four stories, a house of Pavlov. The Soviet soldiers were keeping the defense here. This residential building in front also was destroyed. It all was rebuilt. And now here we have, what about the original the house of Pavlov? Only a little part of the house left here as the real monument of the Battle of Stalingrad. So, look what it used to be, what it used to be. And this is what left from the original house of Pavlov. Four hundred people online. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Stalingrad. The battles were as weird as even all the plaster came out of the building so we can see the bricks and uh, same about Gergert mill Gergert mill which is in front look I saw the photographs it was a completely white they plastered that in white it was plastered white but all the plaster, like, of course, how to say, like, came out, scratched off, I guess, scratched off because of a constant um, shooting, artillery strikes. So the house of Pavlov, 
and the Gergert Mill in France. Gergert Mill. Let me tell you something interesting about Gergert. Alexander Gergert, one of the members of Gergert family, the German family that lived here. You know that in the years of Catherine the Seconds, well, Catherine the Seconds used to invite many people like to settle down in the Russian towns. And uh, so she invited the Germans to live in uh, some places on Volga River. And uh, there's even such a definition as Volga Germans. So, uh, you know, many Germans used to live here. There's even still this whole like a district called Sarepta, Sarepta, where the Germans lived. And uh, so uh, the Gergert family was one of those families. They were an entrepreneurs. Uh, it was yet before the revolution. In 1900, they are constructed, they are constructed the mill. And uh, being the most solid building, because you see, back then, it was the uh, technology. Uh, they never built the buildings with the technology like that. The reinforced concrete frame. And uh, so it was like the most solid building. And it was, I mean, it, it survived. It survived the Battle of Stalingrad. Yes, I mean, you see, it's pretty much damaged, but it survived. And now it's a part of the uh, museum complex called the Panorama of the Battle of Stalingrad. Now here is the museum, the entrance, like 350 rubles, which is about five bucks. You're coming here and there's an amazing, unbelievable 360 panorama of the Battle of Stalingrad. I saw the photographs of this building, this mill. It was like all, you know, like a pure white plasters and a white color. But the battles scratched all that off from the building. Until 1980s, here was even the excursions. Now, not anymore. Now we can just watch it, like, on a distance. Probably the building can't carry to have more people walking there all the time. I guess it's just like uh, kind of dangerous and they are intentionally do not recover it. Gergert Mill. Wow, for 58 days, it was keeping the resistance. What's a big reminder about those dramatic days?
the function of dancing kids. Michael, Maggie, another great history lesson. Thank you, Sergey. You're so welcome. Yes, it's called Bar Malay, Bob Turner. But I'm not sure if everybody knows who is Bar Malay. Also interesting, definitely interesting lighting they made there. Look, it's like now the battles continue there. It's like we see the uh, light from the machine guns. Hello, Sparrow, Fabio Popol, Evgeny Gordienko. So it's uh, the whole memorial complex here. Um, you can not only got, get inside of the panoramic museum, but also like walk, walk around, watch the uh, weapons, tanks, artilleries participated in World War II. Not only the examples of the Soviet techniques, but the German techniques as well. And you know, uh, when you're also walking here, it's like observation platform to watch the Volga River. There's the whole World War II train, train, the medical train, the medical train, steam train. Yes, that cross is definitely not a Soviet marsha. is really wide wide and huge and long our legendary tanks T-34 and more Amazing Volga begins in Tver region, relatively not far from St. Petersburg, and goes all the way, all the way through Russia. This site from the bank of Volga suffered not as much as that site, because you see here 
from the side of Volkov was it's like uh, the uh, natural defense line. So the attacks mostly were from that side. Here the mill is like in a way better condition. It was not destroyed just because it's uh, constructed. with the principle of was the most solid the strongest building in Volgograd back in those days so the museum it having such a round form because there's 360 amazing 360 panorama airplane the Stalingrad was dusk for the uh, German fascist army. Joseph Stalin said that at the 6th of November 1943 that the victory is inevitable. The victory is inevitable. Same as back in those days, same as now, the victory is inevitable. Now you can, now you can understand more why here in Russia, which has lost 27 million people during the World War II fighting with the Nazism, here is a zero tolerance, zero tolerance to the Nazis. Do you guys understand now more why here is a zero tolerance to the Nazis? No way, no way. No way. They can be tolerable here. No way. 27 million. We've already paid once a very big price to fight against the Nazism.
also the house of Pavlov Gergert's mill. I think they need to make uh, the crosswalk here because I think many people when walking Volgograd they are coming to Lenin Square just like we are and uh, then going to this courtyard and uh, through this courtyard you know coming here and then going directly directly there I mean, there is, there is the crosswalk, but it's much better to have one also right here, for example, here or here, or at least in front of that staircase. All right, from the house of Pavlov and Gergert Mill, the Museum of the Battle of Stalingrad, returning to Lenin Square, Lenin Avenue, and keep moving. So now we will go to the to the main, to the very main place in Volgograd, which is only can be the memorial of the Battle of Stalingrad with its main monuments called mother motherland calls or sometimes also known as mother russia motherland calls Will we go to the 360 Museum, Judy? Hello, Judy. Uh, yes, but not today. Um, tomorrow I will have yet the time until the evening. And uh, I'm going to film the vlog. All right, return to Lenin Avenue, the Lenin Square, the house of the officers. It's like the cultural club for military officers. Brianna B, glad to see you are giving my home for 20 years some fun fair. Brianna B, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much. And welcome back to Volgograd, your home for 23 years. Enjoy this. Also, notice that I was making the uh, live stream in the morning when it was the day, daylight, all in the natural daylight. Check that out. And 
enjoy. I enjoy. Vladimir Lenin, the leader, the leader of world proletariat. And the founder of USSR. Hi Ryan Maring. Hi Baikots. Hi everybody. Eliza Bradley. Hi guys. Hello, Ashok Putu. Another great example of uh, Stalinist monumental architecture. So now, guys, I'm going to the very main place. To the very main place of Volgograd. We are going to Mamayev Kurgan, the height 102. You know, it's relatively not far from the embankments. It's not far from the house of Pavlov and Gergert Mill. So this is something what makes Volgograd pretty comfortable for, for walking. Another great Russian city, which is great for walking. By the way, Volgograd is the smallest Russian city with a population of over 1 million residents. Now here is living 1,020,000 residents, you know. I think now the city is doing some better than in the beginning of 2000s, because when after the collapse of USSR, after uh, a weird 1990s, you know, there was the period when the population was dropping down to even below million and uh, then started to go up again. There are also Right in front of the memorial complex um, of the Battle of Stalingrad, we will see Volgograd Arena, the stadium which was built special for World Cup 2018. Volgograd was one of the hosts, one of the cities of Russia which has hosted the games of World Cup 2018 in Russia. Well. If you don't know, I'm talking about football. Just like the one recently was in Qatar. Amar Salam, we do appreciate your efforts to show us Russia. Yes, I know you guys appreciate. I know you guys appreciate it big time. Uh, recently, the uh, uh, volume of supports coming from you guys, it's unbelievable. But you see, you see, as I told you, as I told you, all the time, I invest it all into the new explorations. Only for the last month, Moscow, Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod, Novosibirsk, Vyborg, Veliky Novgorod, and now Volgograd. Hello, Alexander.
Hello, swelling sausage. Diana Payne. Silvana Hori. Is it a bit depressing being in Volgograd remembering all the bloodsheds? No, it's not depressing. It's, uh, I mean, you sad, but you're not depressed. In the same time, you experience unbelievable and extraordinary uh, prowls for your ancestors, for your grandfathers and uh, grandmothers who was fighting against the Nazism. Hello, Trigger. Miss Texas G, thank you. Yes, I'm doing my best to tell you about the history, to tell you and to show it to you. You see, that's why I'm not sitting at home. I'm all the time on the go. I'm traveling as much as I can. And uh, recently, I, uh, you see, travel more because recently uh, more and uh, more people on my channel began to realize that when they are joining the membership, they are supporting the contents. Because I said that 100%, 100% of the revenue from membership, I invest in the trips, okay? And uh, you guys can see this. You see that? So, I mean, like, I really like, I, I spending it all for the trips. Only for the last month. Moscow, Kazan, Nizhny Novgorod, Vyborg, Veliky Novgorod, Novosibirsk, and now Volgograd. I need to walk maybe about one kilometer more or I don't know maybe I will take a trolley damn these vape shops are everywhere now free of vape however they are not free right i mean you're selling the vapes so they are not free why the hell you're calling them free coffee sergey we'll do later okay i think this is mine trolley number nine Just a card. Я не поняла, вот это что? А что ну вот так вот вы делаете. Положите, подержите, да. Спасибо. Как, какая вам остановка нужна? Волгоград арена. Волгоград арена будет А, все, спасибо. Окей, okay, 30 рублей.
Ahmed Mering, thank you for the super sticker. Maria Salam, my friends, you made me love Russia more. It's awesome. It's awesome. Imagine how many people are now making Russia to be loved less in the world. And I'm making it to love more. Whoa. No, Marsha, I'm just going to the best place in the whole Volga Gross. But, you know, uh, the reason, the reason that Volgograd, look, you see Volga River, and Volgograd goes all along the river, it's so long, you see, it's so long, but the advantage is like, that, let's say here, like, uh, they are having mostly one line, which is, goes through the whole city. It's uh, in the metro tram and buses and trolley buses. All right, next stop is mine. Volgograd Arena Stadium and the main monuments the main military monument is located here the largest the largest monument and memorial complex in Russia the largest in the memory of the deadliest officially the deadliest battle of World War II The tram ride, it's a uh, trolley bus ride. Look, Volgograd Arena, the stadium where they hosted the games of World War of World's World Cup. Yes, World Cup. I really want to say World War II. Damn it. Zelenograd the best, hello to you, welcome back home. <laughs> Minus eight degrees Celsius. You know, now will I, when I will, when I will go there from the heights, we will see Volgograd Arena much better than we see this now. That's it. That's it. Whoa, the motherland cold. Stalingrad, the motherland of victory. The victory started here. Exactly from here, the Soviet Union army finally started advancing. Dudes, it's thrilling. I was here yesterday at night i was here in the morning now i'm here again in the evening and every time it was thrilling whoa
Volgograd Arena. But now we will see that much better. When we will go to that height, height 102, the highest place in the city. This is the park, which is called Victory Park. How far from your home are you? Uh, 1,800 kilometers. The colors of Russia. White, blue, red. Volgograd Arena is very busy with events every day, something. Galina Bragina, hello Galina. Yes, nice. Nice to know that they, they have found the usage for that. And after the World Cup, it is actually the problem. The problem for all the Olympic, for the Olympic objects of all the countries, or like a World Cup or Olympic objects, that they don't know much what much to do in all of those places. I saw the videos, how beautiful it is here in the summertime when all the trees are green and many people walking around. Now I guess not many tourists in the winter time in Volgograd and locals just sitting home or in the bars. I went to the restaurant called Marussia right before the stream and all the restaurant was packed. They had only one seat available which was not booked and I've got lucky. I went to the Marussia restaurants, it's like a Russian restaurant because I ate McDonald's yesterday at night and today in the morning and I decided that hey I urgently need something like a normal food Juan Wisnowski, Rowan family vlog, old Richards everybody continue joining look if you join just now no worries, you still never missed the very, 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 very main thing. Apex Photography, welcome.
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes, dudettes. Now, we are on the very final stretch to the motherland's cold monuments and to the Battle of Stalingrad's memorial complex. We have now to make 200 steps up. Every step symbolizes the amount of days the Battle of Stalingrad lasted for. 200 steps, 200 days, from August 1942 to February, the 2nd of February 1943. 200 days. The Battle of Stalingrad, Stalingrad, the deadliest battle of World War II, kept going. It was really the deadliest battle. Almost 1.2 million Soviet soldiers died and up to 1.5 million of the German soldiers and the soldiers of the countries who allies with Nazis back in those days. So only here, only here, only for 200 days from both sides, over 2.5, like actually 2.7 million people died. You see that light? That's the top of this world the mother Russia is holding in her hands. Let's begin. The, the signature here, за нашу советскую родину СССР, for our Soviet motherlands of USSR. Uh, BP1 and G, professor level history lessons, expert tour guide. Uh, thank you from New Jersey, United States. Thank you very much, and Maria Salam, thank you again. All right, now, are you ready? I'm ready. Yes, only one sword is uh, 33 meters in height there. Yes, for our Soviet motherlands of USSR. The signature here. Maria Salam, thanks again. This memorial complex, they started constructing in 1959 and finished only in 1967. Back then it was claimed as the largest statue in the world. Nikolai Nikitin and Evgeny Vucetic, the sculptors of the Motherland Coles Monument. 82, 82 meters.
Marsha, 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 thanks, Sergey, for this. Wish my dad, who fought Nazis, could see this. He would love this. No Hello, Wasteland Courier. Eternal glory to Stalingrad and the heroes of the Soviet Union. Yes, glory. Glory to the Soviet Union. Glory to Stalingrad. Glory to all the heroes of the country back in the years of World War II. The main battle was here because it was the most strategic point. Mamayev Kurgan. So, uh, in fact, this is the hill with the highest point on the distance of 102 meters. When I was here in the morning, I really could see that. You can see the whole Volgograd like on your hand from here. Brianna B, there are thousands of bodies buried under that statue. In fact, you can be arrested if you are caught trying to dig up trophies from the battle. Yes, the brother graves are located here. A lot of our Soviet soldiers, they were buried like here in that literally grinder when millions died for just uh, I mean if you talk about just the Soviet army like over a million died for 200 days well of course they were not able to take care about everybody right away and uh, many were buried like right here and yes you better don't try to vandalize anything here because the security guards are working here 24 7 it's one of the most secret places secret sacred secret Volgograd Arena you see I told you that from here you can see Volgograd Arena much better than when we were staying right next to it. Yes, big objects. And look, this is the uh, railway and uh, many people who are taking a ride through Volgograd, they can see the Motherland Coles monument. Anastasia, thanks so much all the time you are supporting my channel thank you this is why all these trips are possible already 73 cities and towns for the last three years uh, so often they are showing in different videos, catalogs, ATC, just the statue of uh, the main statue, which is called Rodina Mat Zavyot, Motherland Calls. But you see, here is the whole complex. With many sculptures.
Atom Bomb 31458. Thanks for the super. I appreciate it. You guys make sure that after this stream also to watch my morning stream because what I'm making now it's actually the night version of my morning stream um, in the morning it's like a little bit different flavor than in the night time both are great but for example these walls you can see uh, way better if you're watching uh, the stream in a night time or in a daytime also today it was a sunny day and uh, the sun was right uh, behind us so the sun was like a natural light for these walls for these bar leaves за нашу советскую родину for our Soviet motherland. No step back. Todd Smith for American who died helping defeat the Nazis. There were 70 Russians who perished without this sacrifice by the Russians. No victory. Thank you. Twenty seven, twenty seven million Soviet people died. And you know, one of the most disgusting things I've heard. God mercy, the innocent, those died in all Russia. Amor and Maria. Salam. Thank you, guys. One of the most disgusting things that I've heard that, after all, in the Museum of World War II in the United States, there's only a very little corner, very little corner uh, dedicated to the participation of the Soviet Union. There is now the man who said that he loves me, uh, and he said "vas." Well, in Russian language, uh, you can say "you," you can say "you" in two different ways. "You" like "t," so it's like he uh, like <coughs> addressed like really to you as the body he knows or without the respect or you like we was so it's like with the respect both the morning and evening stream are beautiful so we the best thing so much so this guy really wanted to say that <coughs> he loves me in general he's in a very good mood and he's probably now so much loaded with great emotions being here the sculpture which is demonstrating a uh, big partnership a big support to each other which is the Soviet soldiers were giving to each other They were not dumping each other. And there's the next sculpture. There's the nurse. Yeah, you have no idea what a big job the nurses were making, healing the wounded soldiers, or just literally saving them from the battlefield. Um, 
you have no idea what all those women were able to do a uh, you know petite or like tiny tiny looking girls however we are so strong I mean there's a lot of evidence as how um, the tiny girls you know which uh, look so fragile however were able to carry out the soldiers hundreds of soldiers from the battlefields This all is so overwhelming, heartbreaking and overwhelming. I'm here already for the third time for the last 24 hours, but I'm so overwhelmed now, like I'm here for the first time. I mean, think about it. Of course, of course, being born yet in the Soviet Union, I've heard about Volgograd so many times, all those stories about the Battle of Stalingrad, in the history lessons at school, in the movies, in the documentaries, not to mention my father was born here, okay, but still never, never yet I was here. And finally, finally, after all, I'm here and I am impressed even more. Um, let me tell you one thing I already was telling you today in the morning. So many photographs, so many videos I saw with the state of motherland calling. But uh, now I can say that not a single photograph, not a single video do not really, how to say, like give you the real understanding of the scale i mean you never saw uh, you never thought it's that giant hello roxani frolova Diego Zanata It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, everybody have to come here at least to watch to see this memorial complex. Maria Salam, the way you tell the stories makes me feel like I was with them. I'm happy to hear that. I'm really trying to make the story uh, from one side like simple, simple, from another side full of facts, to, to make it like pretty deep. Amar Salam, your explanation of everything is perfect. Thanks. Thank you too, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for appreciation of my work. Uh, the, the pond here in the summertime, and there's also the fountain. I definitely will come back here in the summer. I mean, that's like one of my goals, one of my main goals for the summer. And of course, already will come here with my family. Considering how cold it was here yesterday and today in the morning, well, and that this is the winter, it's actually not a big deal, my family today it's not with me they are in St. Petersburg 
but in the summertime, no way, no way I will come without them. They also have to see this now. Now I know this for sure. Now I know this like never before. навсегда сохранит наш народ память о величайшем в истории войн сражения. Forever our people will save the memory about the greatest battle in the history of the wars. Hello, Susan M. Hello, everybody. Going to the eternal flame. a.m. to 9 p.m. here you see here and here always the guards we saw them today in the morning if you will watch my morning stream you will see this now this is the eternal flame which is burning here since 1967 non-stop non-stop in memory of all those heroes of the Stalingrad and World War II. Here are the walls with full of names, thousands of names, but it's only a little part of all those who died standing for Stalingrad. Yeah, you know, it's impossible to fill in all the names of all the defenders because there was almost 1.2 million of them changing of the guards here every hour uh, just like um, you remember I used to show you the changing of guards, changing of guards um, in Alexander Garden um, next to the Kremlin in Moscow. Neil McDonald's 5 p.m in the winter time 9 p.m. summer time so now it's like uh, the uh, winter mode
those are all the names. the names of the Soviet soldiers died defending the Stalingrad Maria Salam, they are real heroes truth the eternal flame we are so sad Sergei but they are with gods yes they are with gods for sure Vinny the Puch Spasiva Russia thank you Russia 1941-1945 thank you too thank you for watching The motherland calls. We are almost in the highest points so you see we came all the way up from there Volgograd Arena now in the colors of Russian flag our beautiful Russian flag all those sculptures I just went through another heartbreaking monument it's uh, Morning, mother Brianna B. That hole in the chamber roof is significance. If you line it up to the statue, it faces 
it faces west all the way to Berlin, whom was blamed for the carnage. Thank you for this additional information. Dear Gazette, thank you very much. Maria Salam, at least they defended their city, not like others run away. Yes, thank you guys, thank you all. Thank you for appreciation. Thank you for supporting the channel. That's why the trips like this are possible. Thank Wayne Label, hello again. You've been here in the morning, now welcome back in the night time. This is a really great memorial complex because the uh, creators really reached it, really reached the uh, goal to show all the nightmare of the Battle of Stalingrad, all the nightmare of World War II, and all the nightmare of the Nazism. Now, you can understand this way better and way more why here in Russia is a zero tolerance to the Nazism. It was funny today in the morning somebody asked me who was she I mean like somebody can think it's the real lady but it's more like a collective image of the mother Russia the collective image of the motherland so this lady symbolizes our mother, mother of all of us, the mother of our land, in the image of the woman.
today I was walking up but now I will not go up because it's I figure out that when you're getting closer um, it's like hardly you see the statue but from here from here it's the main it's uh, it's the best the best place the the best place to watch uh, the statue so 82 meters look at the people there walking you see they are like ants they are even like uh, twice shorter than even postament postaments so I told you 20 minutes ago that I saw so many photographs videos but not a single photograph or video for all of my 38 years never was able to uh, how to say to give you an understanding of the real size of it Evgeny Vucetic and Nikolai Nikitin, the sculptors, one sculptor, another sculptor, engineer, because you know such a status, um, such a status, it's not only the work of the sculptor, but also the work of the engineer, because the one thing he has like to uh, make uh, the statue, uh, but another thing he has to provide for such a giant structure um, like actually to be mounted if I can say so Magnificent Sergey wow that tiny person next to it yeah <laughs> I'm telling you Sergey, can you go up inside like you can the State of Liberty? Well, it's not available for for the regular people. I mean, I saw some like uh, videos, like uh, some big travel channels. They were uh, getting into the agreements with the administration, and they allowed them to go up. So it's like there's inside, there's uh, the stairway, I mean like there's the stairway inside and uh, uh, you can actually, uh, there's the exit on the head of the statue, so you can actually like literally to stay on the head of the statue, but it's not available for everyone. I mean, you can't buy the ticket or something. It's like only on special purpose. For the big travel show or something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now here is where I would love to say bye. Bye for now, bye for today. Um, it was really so important for me, I think, so important to share it, to share it with you. This is something really significant, one of the most significant places. And uh, 
I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to share it with you. This is a big piece of the history. A big piece of history. You guys also check out my morning stream. I also like in the morning went to the embankments, then to the alley of heroes, Lenin Avenue, Lenin Square, the house of Pavlov, Gergert Mill, and then I came here, but that was during the daylight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching. You guys all have peace, love, and happiness. Amar Salam. Thank you too. Thank you again. Special thanks to all the members, to all the supporters. Stay tuned and keep watching. Love and peace to everybody. You see, peace. Ron Helton, Stacy O'Shields, Matt Anderson, Neil McDonald's, Brian B, Maria Salam, Whitey Hill, Cap, Carlos Pena, Judy Butterfield, The Imperial, Paul Harris, Oliver Crappy, Iron Gabriel, Dan Paul, Harry Randalls, Lily Pope, Marsha, 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 Ryan Baring, The Little Grand the Best, Terry Bell 3, Miss Tree 1, Pat Trim, Kidanza Art, Breeze, Vinny the Pooh, RQC, Miss Texas G, Gam Usina 69, Daniel Kapek, Diana Payne, Eliza Bradley, Shahel Lavia, Pixel Prolo, Amar Salam, Maria Salam, Steve Kembley. See you all 